Here they come. We're just waiting on this deer to walk under the net. It's about to happen. Watch it. All right, go get her, go get her, go get her. Go get her. We're out here today in Jefferson County in a cold afternoon, and I'm here with Deer Program Coordinator, Joe McDermott. Joe, I know you travel the state trying to gather data on deer, mm -hmm. and we're sitting right here in the middle of two or three highways, <laughs> all within sight range, trying to catch deer. Yep. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what we're doing and why we're doing it. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet recently received a big federal grant to look at deer vehicle collisions along mm -hmm. Kentucky's highways. Their focal area for this study is the I-64 and US-60 corridor. And they're basically going through identifying hot pockets of deer, where they are, trying to figure out ways to make the roadways safer. They asked us to be a partner with them to help provide some GPS collar data. So they're using thermal drones, ground surveys, camera surveys, things like that to get a lot of good data along the roadways. But adding some real time collar data with these deer that are living along the roadways is just another piece of the puzzle that sheds some different light on the subject. To gather that data, you have to catch a deer, yep. collar that deer, and then turn it loose, and then how long can you gather data on a collar? Uh, it kind of depends on how many locations we take, but for the most part, about three or four years with the GPS collar. Okay, so this will give you information on how often they're crossing the highway, where they're crossing the highway, yep. how, how far they're living away from the highway. Exactly. So this morning we are in Beckley Creek Park. We're gonna set our drop net and uh, hopefully get the deer used to it, get back out here in a couple of days and try and get some collars on some deer. The Parklands has cleared a spot for us up against the creek here. We've been baiting this site, trying to get the deer pattern to come into this area. The Parklands at Floyd's Fork, what a beautiful area for a lot of residents here close by. We like to think of the park as Louisville's biggest conservation project. And our motto is safe, fun, clean and beautiful 365 days a year. Safe being that first word. Mm -hmm. That's why we were really excited when we heard about this study to partner with Fish and Wildlife, the transportation cabinet, to really see how we can make Kentucky roads safer. This is thousands and thousands of acres that doesn't get any hunting pressure. So it's a great spot to gather this data because there's a lot of deer here. Yep. It's a good spot for us to put up a net and capture these deer and put them back out of the landscape because a normal deer may not last three or four years in Kentucky, but you might be able to gather three years of data right here. Most of these animals are living here on this property. We'll be able to get good data for a longer period of time than normal. Again, they're living right here next to Highway 64, right? Yeah. So they're interacting with it all the time. This is a perfect scenario for us. That's the center of the drop net. It's going to look like a big circus tent by the end of it. We're going to try and line that up right in the bait pile there. So they got ways where deer can go underneath the highway instead of going over top of them, put signs for deer crossings. Is that type of information we're talking about? I think, yeah, along those lines, trying to figure out where it is that they're going across the roads or there are ways that we can make them safe. We don't see them so much in the east, but we do in the west a lot. And like these big migration corridors, transportation cabinets is that they're putting in overpasses, underpasses, ways for these animals, large numbers of them, to cross the roads without impacting the roadways. So I'm not sure what form it'll take here in Kentucky, but we do know that they are using some existing structures already. Place is like you see right over here with the bridge underneath 64. They're crossing those naturally, right? So how can we take things that they're doing naturally in conjunction with this data and improve upon it, right? To make it even safer. The trap is set. The drop net's ready to be dropped on deer. But before we leave, we're gonna do a quick test drop, make sure all the knots are where they need to be. Everything's connected how it should. Looks good. Let's put it back up. <laughs> So you've got a net that's up right now, yep. and you're actually baiting these deer to come in so we can catch them. Well, hopefully deer come under the net. So <laughs> hopefully they show up, but I think they will. They'll go to the drop net site. 
Our ideal tonight is two to three deer, unless we can get a male. If we get a male, we'll do a solo. But once they go in, get to the center of the net, it'll be pretty cool to see. We've got a big catfishing pole and 80 pound braid runs about 200 yards out to the net. And we'll set the hook and the net falls and we all run in there and tackle them. Look at the deer, look at the deer, look at the deer. Well, <laughs> well, Tommy, we've uh, been here about 45 seconds. We haven't even cut the truck off yet. The truck's still running, and we already had a deer across the road. How far away are we right now, 160 yards? Yeah, a little bit over 100 yards. Joe, here he comes. He didn't realize we already got deer in there. There's a deer right there. We just pushed it. It was bedded down in this stuff right here. I tell you what, I've caught some weird things on a uh, rod and reel. Never a deer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, we got a deer. Got a buck right there. There he is. So you can see right here, here's a corn pile. There's a center pole right here. We're waiting on him to make that final 10 or 12 steps to get under the bait. And that's down. down. He's in it. I see him jumping. <laughs> all right, so Tommy's and you all going to restrain him. Watch his antlers. Here's a blindfold. All right. I'm going to get his drug drawn up as soon as we stop. Mm, he is definitely down. We got the deer down right there. So the first thing we'll do is obviously physically restrain them. So we'll lay on them, put our body pressure on them, right? We're paying attention to their head, their neck, their spine, things like that, making sure that they're in a safe position. But you want to restrain them so they can't flop around and beat themselves up. Got him subdued so he's not going to hurt himself. Joe's working the immobilization drug up right now. I've drawn the drug up and coming in to immobilize it, usually within three to five minutes. From the time the net falls, they are on the ground, fully under, and ready for the workup process. So now that the drug is taking effect on the deer, it got all wrapped up in the net by jumping it around. So they're almost got it out of the net so they can finish up the workup. We're not doing a whole bunch of the animal during the workup. It's mainly just ear tags and collars. We just need to identify who they are and see where they're going. In the event that this deer is actually taken by a legal hunter, I'm sure you want this collar back. Yes, sir, I do. It has our Fish and Wildlife's number, tells you exactly who to call, everything they need to know. If they're a legal hunter and it's a legal opportunity, you're not telling people not to take this. Exactly. Deer. We're not telling you not to take it because, you know, there are different components in here with biases. You don't want to bias your estimates, right? But yeah. if it's an animal that you see and you would take it otherwise, then feel free to do so. So once that's done, we're gonna give them the reversal, pop them right back up, they're on their feet, on their way, none the wiser. The ultimate goal is to make Kentucky's roadways safer. And the really cool part about this project is we are making the roadways safer for everyone. Whether you're a hunter, fisher, anything like that, you interact with wildlife more than you know, especially along these roadways, and we're trying to make that as safe as possible.